All right, so we are in Clip Studio. So this is basically uh, an example of the result you're going to get with the test map that we've made. Very simple, and this is before I've added anything else. Uh, you can see it's very simple. It follows the grid, which I've set up in Clip Studio, so I can just make sure everything uh, follows the grid properly. All right, so let's go up to here and let's go to open. And I'm just going to open up the test map Reddit floor base. Okay. And uh, my computer likes to freak out when I load levels. So here we have it. And then I'm just going to add the test map Reddit outline base. Okay. So I'm going to press Control C. Go back to test map Reddit and press Control V to paste the layer in. You can also just import it into it, but this will make it perfectly uh, overlaid. So it's there. You can see it if I press this. It's there. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I am going to go to another level that I have. Uh, if you want, um, if you have Clip Studio, there's a really nifty option. Uh, if you open Clip Studio and put these videos side by side, you can go up to Edit obtain screen color and you can capture any screen on your monitor. So I could capture the color of Discord if I wanted or, you know, anything from here. But I'm going to take capture this color. All right. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to layer, new layer, paper. And this is basically going to add a, ba a consistent background layer. And I'm going to set it to this color. If it doesn't already have this selected, uh, you can copy the hex value from the color and then paste it in there, and it'll be the color. There you go. Paper. Paper is always the bottom layer, so it's really helpful. It's really useful. OK. And now I'm going to go in, and I'm going to take this color. This color is not black. It is very cool. It's a dark green. Uh, I got that directly from the map, so uh, it's it's accurate. And uh, I'm just going to go into here. I want to click this box to lock transparency, which basically means if you're new to image editing software, is it will not uh, whatever you do, it will not mark uh, outside where there is a transparent color. So since this is just this is just the bounds of the level, and we export it as transparency, this is important because then we just have to press this paint bucket tool up here, and it'll fill it in black. Uh, I did notice something, so we need to get rid of this. So just select it, and then hit take off, apply to connect, and select it, and then press X. It'll keep the grid. However, that's fine. If you want, if you really are like worried about it, you can just erase it, um, or you can cover it up with something. Um, I think I'll just erase it here because it doesn't really matter. You can go, you can erase past the floors a bit because remember you have the floor layer on top. So anything like that is, is fine. But I wouldn't worry too much about erasing the grid because it's not going to really be noticeable when you're done. Okay, so let's uh, redo that thing. All right, so we have this and this is going to be the basic background for everything. So very simply, we have this. We have this for the background, which I use to mask the uh, stuff outside of the walls. And then we have the inside, which is black, and we have the outside, which isn't colored yet. So let's get the uh, color of the walls uh, in first. So what we do for that is I'll go back into here. I'll take this color, add enable transparency, and then hit it again and you know just like that we have this and it's quite lovely i'm going to go in as a racer and i'm going to delete these because we don't need them anymore and it'll help us prepare for the next step uh, how i typically do that because we do have grids on the other side so it does make it a little hard to select is just go to your polyline tool which is a very useful tool um, make a new layer underneath everything and just trace everything. And now you do see you do see some black here, but I wouldn't worry about this kind of stuff too much because you are going to be zoomed out 
you need to uh, I, I like to try and keep in mind that no one can zoom into a map on roll 20 this close usually and no one's going to have a reason to uh, maps for this are pretty unless you're doing some kind of homebrew combat um, everything is described via distances away so in in our alien rpg so actually having a map that's fully detailed isn't as necessary because it's um it's not really as necessary it's nice to have one um obviously it helps bolster the imaginative uh process of imagining what your surroundings look like uh but until someone actually makes some really good uh consistently drawn sci-fi uh, ass assets which i have a lot of trouble finding it's going to be a little harder uh i am an artist however I do not do landscaping, so this is as good as I can get, really, at the moment. Um, but, okay, well, other than that, once we have that all selected, make sure we have this same black color selected, and then just press that, and there you go. This is the basic layout of my thing. I, I tend to leave a little bit of black in the out in the outside so I can add, like, the name of it. So, um, yeah. This is basically what I do, and um, now I'm going to go over the, uh, the the process of adding icons and text. Uh, the text that I use for my levels is the same exact text that they use for the actual book. So it's called OCRA STD, which is OCRA standard, and this is the same text that they use in the book. So uh, a very, I'm very, I'm very um, adamant about making it look as close to source as possible. So I, 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 I found, I just basically tracked down what text this is. And um, I'm just gonna type, let's say this is, I always set it to centered, so it looks good. And then test, always do caps, test room. It's like one X row for some reason, right? right? And then I just put it somewhere in the center and there's our test room. And now what we have to do is we have to add the icons to show what's actually in these areas. So this is very simple. I just go to image. I have all of them. Uh, I have all of them in map markers. I, I have extracted all of these and I can share these with you if you wish. Uh, they're not perfect, but since they're gonna be zoomed out, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I captured these directly from a PDF because they're rendered via vector images. So you can do this yourself if you want something a bit more accurate. But these are the actual icons in the book. And I'm just going to import them all at once. So like that. And because I do this, because now, since they're all selected pre ahead of time, I can press Control T and scale them down to the scale that I think fits for this for the size of my level. And I think this is good. So now I'm going to press Enter. I'm going to click off. I'm going to unselect everything. And then I'm going to click this button that says Operation. And I'm going to make sure the operation is set to object. So now uh, I don't have to go through different layers. Whatever I click on becomes the active layer. So I can now move these things around and, you know, I can place them however I want, uh, line them up however, and just place them wherever. Typically you want to have intercoms at in various points if uh, in a colony. So you can get messages across. So maybe put one here, press control C, control V, drag, maybe put one here. Uh, maybe put one outside the base too. Maybe you have an, uh, an a different uh, way to uh, access stuff like that, you know. But uh, yeah, everything's here. Uh, I just import everything at once so uh, that I would be using that's applicable to what I'm doing, to what I'm making. So if I'm making a colony, I wouldn't really have an airlock unless it's applicable. I wouldn't really have escape pods, again, unless ac uh, applicable. Cryopods usually are in ships, so I probably wouldn't import stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, and then I just place these wherever, like that. So uh, how do I, and that's pretty much it. Sometimes I make a map legend, but I've decided to just make a map legend in like a Discord channel that I have that should, tells you what everything is. And I place it, always place it first alongside the, the map handouts. And I'm gonna show you how to make the handout, this look like very easy, the handouts in uh, the handout port versions of the maps. So I, I've made a custom gradient for this. Um, and to do this, you simply go up to I can share the gradient, I think, and I'll share it, but I'm gonna go up to layer, new correction layer, gradient map. And this uh, basically applies a filter that uh, will alter all the colors on the level by these grid. So I have this one called handout filter. Uh, it looks like, it, it basically just looks like this. It's very simple, but when I do it, bam, it looks like the handout. 
and that's very cool. And I'm going to press OK. So now I can toggle this, and it will toggle between the two types that uh, that that you'll prepare. One for Roll20, the other for a handout on D&D. I use this so I have all of the levels for the area in one place that they can reference. And this is basically like the, the blueprint of the level. It does not contain characters or anything, so it's not spoiling anything, so it's easier to just show them this without having to mess with GM layer and stuff like that. So uh, I just like doing it. It's also just a, a nice feature, but um, we have it like that. So also, how do I get that screen effect that my levels have? Well, sometimes I make this individually, which takes a lot of time. I'll just select a bit like that, and then I'll just duplicate and copy, duplicate and copy, and go the whole way down. And that takes a lot of time. So what I like to do sometimes is I'll go up to File, uh, Import, and I'll find and I'll find a screen. Uh, a screen CRT texture or something like that. So uh, I have one here. If I can locate it, scan line. So this is a really big. Uh, this is a really big uh, texture. Uh, I just scale it over everything, like that. And then I'll set this to soft light. And there you go. Uh, you can mess with the opacity to make the effect a little less strong, which is what I typically do. But uh, there, and that's basically everything that I do. But uh, there is one thing that I should do that uh, I just remembered, actually. So let's take off this, is the vents. So how do I do ventilation? Clip Studio has a program, has a system called the straight line tool. And inside the straight line tool, you can find a dotted line. And that's perfect. So what I'll basically do is I'll just select the dotted line tool, scale it up. And now I can make vents wherever I want. So make a vent like that, put it down there, have it go like down that way. And maybe connect it right here. And if it ends right there, it's implied it's connected there. So that's basically what I do for that. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's my process. It's uh, simple. It's, it can be effective uh, based on the level size of your level. Obviously, it'll take more time to uh, place all these textures and name everything, but uh, this is a pretty, pretty good result, I think. Easy to reproduce. Uh, you do not need Clip Studio for this. Um, it helps, definitely. Uh, Clip Studio is pretty cheap. You can find the Pro version for pretty cheap. It goes on sale twice a year for a massive discount, like eight, I'm talking like 80% sometimes. It depends. But um, yeah, it's um, definitely worth looking into if you're gonna be making these maps. It's also just good if you're an artist. It has a lot of shit for arts, artists. Don't get EX, the EX version, if you're only gonna use this for making these maps, not very worth it. Everything that I've done here, you can do with just the normal pro version. Uh, there's also a free trial. So if you use the free trial, you know, you can make all the maps that you want until your free trial is over. And uh, it worked pretty good. But yeah, so this is my uh, this is my uh, result. Very easy to replicate, and uh, everything. If you guys want the icons, um, just um, if you guys do want the icons, just uh, let me know, and I will uh, package those up for you. If you want the uh, the fonts, um, I could package up for you uh, if you want. Uh, I can find the fonts. I have all the fonts used in the book. Um, and I have them all installed just in case, you know, I want to do something like make my own custom, um, homebrew stuff that looks like the, the book. I can easily do that with my method. I can just make everything in Dungeon Painter. It doesn't have to be a dungeon. Uh, this is just my method, right? So, um, yeah, this is my method. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully it's uh, been enlightening to some of you, uh, on how you can, uh, really easily make some really affectionate maps. Oh! One last thing, actually, the doors. So, doors. Uh, I typically do doors manually. There is a tool called the rectangle tool, and I'll just, um, you know, I'll just set it to a good thickness, which I don't think that's a good thickness, like that, and then I'll just draw it like that, and there's your door. And then you can just, you know, you can do that for all of them. But yeah, 